Hi, my name is Carl Pearson, and I've been a victim of the dumbing down of America, and I want to uh, now gather the facts and determine whether anyone is promoting and profiting from the dumbing down of America. First of all, I want to explain what is meant by the phrase, the dumbing down of America. Wikipedia says, and I'm quoting, that dumbing down is the deliberate oversimplification of intellectual content in education, literature, and cinema, news, video games, and culture. The term dumbing down originated in 1933 as a movie business slang. Dumbing down usually involves the diminishment of critical thought and trivializing meaningful information, culture, and academic standards, as in the case of popular culture. So that's the end of that quote. I see it mainly from the educational standpoint because I created, owned, taught, and managed a proprietary school in New York for 18 years while practicing law as a plaintiff's antitrust attorney. From my perspective, dumbing down is the deliberate and increasing failure to provide the best education to Americans and instead to provide sh short, out-of-date, meaningless courses, often no-show or little-show, little-work courses, so students can obtain a degree without much effort, but at great lifetime expense to them with a very small percentage of the students able to obtain a solid education with all the obstacles placed in their way. The first time I met my school's state regulator, I saw that he was in blue jeans and was wearing a clearly obvious pistol. I should have known at that time that higher education had substantial regulatory restraints. Education was considered so important that it was provided constitutional protection under the First Amendment to the Bill of Rights. In these words, Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech, dot, 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 or the right of the people peacefully to assemble, dot, dot, dot. In my word, the freedom to teach and the freedom to assemble and learn is what that means. The Bill of Rights was added to the Constitution on December 15, 1791. Antitrust enforcement was so important for the economy that the Sherman Antitrust Act was enacted 130 years ago, in 1890, before there was any radio, television, electric toasters, or refrigerators, or the automobile which was invented in Germany in 1885 and not on the road in any significant numbers in the U.S. until the Model T Ford in 1908. Most states, including New York, have enacted laws that excessively regulate higher education type proprietary schools so that they can't remain in business because they are better, which then forces many of the students to attend the largely inferior state and local government funded schools, the colleges and universities. Because of the student loans now being diverted to the government finance schools, this reduces the taxes needed to support these inferior government owned schools which many students would like to avoid. The entry of the U.S. Department of Education and its student loans made things much worse. Instead of concentrating on excellence of instruction, which is, by the way, very difficult to, for somebody to regulate, uh, to be able to have competition among all American higher education schools, the schools with student loans, including my school, had to spend a high percentage of management time, that is, my time, my uh, one busy person to cope with vast with a vast number of requirements from three regulatory agencies that is one state licensing two the US Department of Education and three repeated accreditation or approval by the school's competitors no less to be able to keep the student loan program upon which the schools depended for 75 to 95 percent of their revenue Without student loan money, most schools would fail unless they received sufficient funding from state or local governments. 
I saw an inability to spend the time necessary to keep the courses up to date, especially because we had to make an application to change any instruction, which was reviewed by the regulator with a pistol or referred to someone else for review and approval who wasn't employed and consequently was not up on the latest ideas in that industry. It often took a year to get approval, by which time the curriculum would be out of date. So the school finally wonders why bother to update the curriculum at all. It just doesn't make sense, is this regulation. I brought a federal action under the First Amendment to challenge the situation and lost. I didn't bother to appeal. I figured that uh, I knew what the result would be. Community colleges in New York City had near 100% attendance on the day of each month when the students' part of the student loan proceeds were turned over to students, who often registered merely to obtain their part of the student loan proceeds and not to get an education or to repay the loans. One school in Florida had an approved curriculum of basket weaving. High schools in New York were not allowed to fire poorly performing teachers, so nobody did anything to try to take poor teachers out of the classrooms, and the better teachers didn't want to teach in the impoverished areas of New York City. Students spend substantially less time in class than the students of many other countries. Summer vacation, for example, was intended to give students the opportunity of helping their family harvest crops which is no longer needed, but the vacations, the long vacations, continue. So, okay, you agree with me that there is a dumbing down of America, but is this an intentional policy and is anyone benefiting? Let's start off by accepting that poorly educated persons earn a lot less than more educated persons. If you looked at your competition for repairing automobiles, or for getting a job in Walmart, wouldn't you be more op optimistic if your competition had a much lower level of education than you? Walmart must consider the impression its greeters make at the incoming door. Look at the persons who own the nation's top businesses. Do they want everyone to know as much as they do? Would they object if the schools turned out dumbed-down graduates? especially if they can say that nobody in America has the needed qualifications and then import and hire a much less expensive but more educated person from another country, and this often was India. Failure to enforce the antitrust laws has enabled the largest companies and their shareholders to buy Congress and the President to do their bidding and to ensure that judges do not enforce the First Amendment rights as to higher education, or lower education for that matter. Instead of permitting schools to compete for excellence, we have the government own, we have government own them or strangle them in regulation to ensure that they can't perform in providing the best education. The ruse is that regulation pre prevents fraud but why not just regulate schools with fraud lawsuits and existing anti-fraud anti -fraud statutes, unless you are saying that the courts don't work? And many people would agree with that. The answer is that private unregulated schools would gradually prevail throughout the country and wipe out the inferior governmental and protected schools and result in a better and well-educated public more capable of owning or working for small business and competing with big business. The rich and powerful, or at least enough of them, recognize that higher education is a training camp at government or student expense for the employees of big business, government, and the military to start their 40-year climb up the ladder. But they are not going to allow higher education to train their small business competition so the policy is to dumb down education for as many people as possible and require extra work by a comparatively few students to overcome this policy. If voters generally wanted to improve the educational system, would the big-time contributors go along with that? Or would they influence the legislators and president not to make the improvements? As I see it, the persons who provide the needed campaign contributions 
are not interested in creating more competition for themselves and dumbing down naturally results. The good thing, as I see it, is that a dumbed down person doesn't realize that he or she has been dumbed down and believes that he or she is as knowledgeable as everyone else in many cases. Also, the poorly educated white male is more apt to be a Republican than a Democrat, and rioters tend to be less educated than others who stay away. The real rioters are the greatest victims of dumbing down and become even more victimized as they riot to let their plight be known. They are assisted by the mostly imported exploitive rioters who have a different axe to grind. On the other hand, Asian students, some of which were sons and daughters of employees of Chinese restaurants and sometimes living in the basement of the restaurant, were encouraged by their family to study extra hours per day and they went to the top of their classes and were able to become 50% of the students in the number one high school in New York City, Stuyvesant High. And at one time, perhaps even now, number one in the nation, with a current movement to reduce their percentage by giving preference to students who, for their own legitimate economic, cultural, and geographic reasons, did not work as hard or perform as well. Let me not forget the mainstream media, which is guided by the rule that if it bleeds, it leads, and what I see is total exploitation of the evils, but almost no publicity for the possible cure. I suppose it is true that the dumbing down is so thorough that few persons would be interested in the details presented in this video, which is sort of a vaccine to protect the dumbing down of America. All of these factors have resulted in my conclusion that the country has been dumbed down by non-enforcement of the antitrust laws and First Amendment as to education, that this has increased the dumbing down, that this has benefited the rich a sufficient number of whom want to keep things for them going in the same upward direction, and the politicians can't fight it and too many go along with it to ensure that they get the campaign funding needed to get reelected and to continue with what they are doing, including their support for continuing to dumb down America. The economy suffers as a result and the dumbed down persons are more apt to seek revenge in the streets through riots, lose their homes, businesses and lives, with assistance from some of the rich who are benefiting from the riot and stay away from the riot as far as they can and watch the stock market increase to reflect the loss of more small businesses and the increase in unemployment and deaths from the coronavirus. Well, I've said what I wanted to say. I'm not sure if you'll agree and I'll be back soon, soon with my next video.